Yes, we do. Please. Okay, perfect. So when we say about when we, when we say to our residents and go put back the bone of that patient, we are actually telling them to perform the most risky intervention in terms of complications that we have in neurosurgery. So if we look at the rate of cranioplasty and complications, the it's across multiple studies, it's, it's a huge statistic, and it's uh, from 10% to 41% of rate of complication. So the rationale we have to tell uh, ourselves, I think, is that um, we need to plan cranioplasty early on when we first do the craniotomy. Because half of the complications of the craniotomy are preventable with a good planning, even though it's a traumatic moment for both for the patients and for the family and the surgeons. But if we plan accurately the intervention and we we perform scouting patients correctly and we plan ahead, many, I believe, of the complications for for ophthalmoplasty when it's so later on can be a little not prevented, but a little at least uh, make made better. So we know that we aim to restore the stasis of the patient. We want to improve his dynamics and provide cerebral protection. And also we know that it, uh, putting the bone back will facilitate rehabilitation and probably also enhance rehabilitation because of, uh, because of what happens with the traffic syndrome and when, what, what we see with, good, with patients with a good outcome after we put bone back. I think you're familiar with this classification. If not, I suggest you incorporate in your practice. If you want to do research, it's very useful. It's very simple. So this is Clavian Dino classification. It will uh, simply state the event of a complication in the first 30 days after a surgery and uh, whether or not uh, there is a complication still going on at some of the charge. This is uh, going, this is useful for all surgeries, but uh, I think it's particularly um, useful for us because we have usually complications that might last um, not, not so many days in our intervention, so trans deficits or, 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 or else. Uh, but in cranioplasty, complications we need to be divided in very early complications and later complications, and also with those with medical management, and those that will require surgical management. Not all the complications will require surgical management, but it, uh, if they're going to require surgical management, they are the ones with uh, worse prognosis. The main complications we see are hemorrhage and infarction, infections, CSF disturbances, fundations, and bone flap resorption. So all those complications we knew very, very well. I am not here to tell you that we will have some hemorrhage after um, uh, a cranial fee that it might have infections. We all know that. The point is that we need guidance. The whole horde needs guidance because we have many controversies about cranial fee, at, at, at least as much as we have about decompressive craniectomy. So what do we do when we have to deal with these kind of complications? Um, failure to prepare is um, preparing to fail. So we need to address our issues uh, by reviewing our statistics and to see what can be uh, done better. We, when, when we did this here, we changed drains, basically, and it, uh, it lessened the hemorrhagic complications by uh, a whole 30% of the total. So uh, review your statistics and think about um, kind of antibiotherapy and talk with it uh, about it with your infectious disease specialist. Uh, if you have disturbances, if you want to shun the patient, be sure if possible to have programmable valves, which are not very expensive right now. So think about this as well. Conditions. This is also nutritional. This is not just uh, ischemic patients is also uh, providing patients with basic nutritional support, vitamins, 
uh, and also pre-plan the hoarding fishing. So if you do a large flap as we have to, we are doing a decompressive, to pre-plan the reconstruction later. And uh, about bone flap resorption, we also I'll talk about it later, but the risk factor for complications, they are predictors of overall complications. Of course, if we have uh, a patient with hypertension, with, uh, with the elderly, and with a hemorrhagic stroke, it will predict um, a major rate of complications. And while predictors of mortality are uh, overlying, underlying disease already already present and the bifront of um, and also repeated hematoma evacuation. Um, why I'm talking about bone flap resorption? Because one of the trail in literature is what do I put back? And the answer is usually what I, I will put back what I can. Usually um, we cannot state that autologous bone is better or worse than uh, prosthesis, but bone flap resorption is a specific material related complication uh, the etiology may be um, quite variable and infection, underlying infection, uh, lack of blood supply, uh, also here nutritional. Uh, it will bring a high rate of surgical redo and moreover infection. And you will have a failure of the protection issue that you want, the reason you want to put back. So um, it's not demonstrated that subcutaneous or biobanking will bring different kind of uh, rate of bone flap resorption. But we know that uh, younger age, we meaning younger and more vital metabolism, shunt dependency and fragmentation from trauma are independent risk factor for bone flap resorption. So um, also other things that we have to consider is that materials about, about uh, cranioplasty and methods of the cranioplasty uh, it's better early, it's better late, it's better autologous or not, it's better in the very beginning, it's better after a little bit of rehabilitation, when every rehabilitation is present, but it's not, it's not said. Um, there is, um, my, my whole goal is to talk about this consensus statement, uh, which is amazing, and it's, uh, it's a very, um, it's made, it's, it's uh, three years ago in Naples, uh, with a wide variety of nationalities um, present in the in the committee and in the others, so uh, this is this needs classes, but it's an open access paper, and I suggest to every to everyone to read it and to have a look. It's um, it's based of of eminent opinions, and I think it has helped my practice a lot. Um, I was still resident when uh, this paper uh, came out, and I'm, I'm. The case in craniopathy as something that will occur, that we pre plan this with our patients and mostly the families. And, but and that even so, even when we think about complications, when we're talking to families before performing a decompressive craniectomy, we already tell them there will be a second surgery if your your if your loved one will will manage to stay alive. So it's a plan, and I think this is all we need to convey. There might be complications. We can we can manage them. They can be burdensome, but it's a plan. So we're doing everything we can from the moment of the compressive craniectomy to the cranioplasty. And the family, I, from my practice, the family has a much, much uh, more um, acceptance of the second intervention and the possible complication that will arise if we, if they, if they know that their doctors, their beloved doctor is planning for them and with them. So this is my biography for this kind of talk and thank you very much.